Okay, wait a minute. All right, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, right, okay, I still have one more person. Good, very nice, very nice. Okay, I have a message. Wait a minute. Uh, Ma'am, I'm joining only from one. Okay, Ume Habiba, then definitely somebody is using your name to join. No? <laughs> Maybe that's a boy I'm trying to be, you know, I don't know. Anyways, Assalamu alaikum, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for cooperating yesterday. I was not feeling well. So it's very kind of you to, <laughs> you know, uh, postpone the class. It's good. Okay, so let's start without wasting any time. I am so happy we have good strength. All right. Okay, so the drug we are, which we are going to start today is endocrine gland. Okay. Uh, we In the previous session, I gave you lecture on, uh, it, it was an introductory lecture, right? Where we discussed that uh, what kind of hormones are there, where we discussed what kind of endocrine glands are there, right now today we are going to dig deep into one or two of the endocrine glands right okay so today we are going to talk about agents affecting growth hormone uh, gonadotropin releasing hormones and analogs prolactin releasing factor and prolactin inhibiting factor no we'll talk about part a and part b right uh, c d and e i'll probably cover up in my next lecture which is inshallah tomorrow all right so what by looking at this slide what comes up into your mind you can text what do you think i'm going to talk about the class of hormone will affect what Steroids, growth, growth hormone, awesome, very nice growth, very nice. Irij, Anam, uh, Umeh, Umeh Khan, Umeh Habiba, very nice. Neha said it will promote growth. Yes, very good, everybody. So today we are going to talk about growth hormones, right? Okay. All right. So uh, the agent we are, which we are going to focus first of all, is. Uh, the agents that affects the growth hormone. We are going to talk about two two categories of these. First one, which will release the growth hormone, okay, and the second one that will inhibit, right? Because affect is a broad term. It can either increase the release or it can inhibit, right? All right. So uh, the first one is hormone releasing hormone right it means that this is a uh, class of drug where we are going to talk about uh, this is a hormone that will enhance the growth hormones release right all right so it's an active peptide of 44 amino acids produced by hypothalamus what is hypothalamus you all know that right within the rqh nucleus now what is rqh nucleus wait a minute yeah here here, if you see, I have, not me, I have picked up a diagram um, in which uh, the pituitary gland and hypothalamus was enlarged. And then if you look here, uh, above pituitary gland, here you have arcuate nucleus, right? Okay, so that means that pituitary gland, uh, somewhere from here, these growth hormones will be released and they will affect um, on our muscle growth, bone, bone growth, right? And of course, they'll go to the liver as well because that's the place where proteins are made, right? All right. So you see here uh, that growth hormone binds to uh, a specific membrane, GHRH receptors on pituitary somatotrophs. Now, what is this? Wait. Now you see, uh, when we'll talk about pituitary gland, all right, so here you have uh, different receptors, right? So here this is somatotroph, and on that, if you focus over here, this is GHRH, and wait, I have to admit two people here. Okay, wait, I have three more people who want to join. Wait. 
Okay, good, good, good. Very nice. I'm happy that you guys have extremely good attendance. Superb, everybody. Well done. I'm super happy about it. Okay. Hanji. So I was telling you all that you see that you have uh, this GHRH here that goes down to the pituitary gland, okay, and then it activates the somatotroph. And however, there is another hormone that is GHIH, uh, which means that it's an inhibiting hormone, right? It goes and it produces negative effect, right? So that means it inhibits, right? Okay, so all right, let's go back. So here, um, no, okay. So here we were talking about that it will, uh, the somatotroph will have the GHRH receptors, right? To which the GHRH would actually bind, right? So GHRH rapidly elevates serum growth hormone, which is somatotropin, right? Uh, so it is composed of amino terminal 24 residues, that is sermorelin. Uh, it was available for use uh, to diagnose pituitary responsiveness and growth hormone secretory capacity, but it has been removed from the US market. Now you see, uh, if you want to know about this drug even in more detail, so you can write its name, that's sermorelin, all right? And then you'll type FDA. So the entire document will come in front of you and you'll enjoy reading it if you are into research and everything, all right? But I can tell you briefly about it, that it was discontinued, right? The drugs which are, are removed from the market, we call it discontinued drugs, right? So it was discontinued because its making was very difficult. It did not have any safety issues or efficacy issues, but it, it was very difficult to make the active ingredient, right? That is why it was discontinued uh, in, in 2008, right? Okay, so then GHRH release from the accurate nucleus is also modulated by GH secretor gauge. So these are the, uh, wait a minute. So these are the, you know, secretory glands which secrete the growth hormones, okay? So, uh, all right. So is modulated by GH secretor gauge via a unique GH secretor gauge receptor, which is actually the Gelerin receptor. So this Gelerin is a peptide secreted by stomach in response to fasting, and it also stimulates the appetite, right? Okay, all right. So you see, I think I have included, yeah, I have included. All right, so you see here, this glaring, all right, it sends a message to the brain, and then as a result, the growth hormones are released. All right, now talking about uh, the factor, uh, the growth hormone inhibiting fact, or uh, the somatotropin release inhibiting hormones, right? Okay, wait. When I'm pausing in between, it means that I'm adding somebody. All right. Uh, okay. I, I don't have any problem with that. And I'm, and I'm happy that you all are here. I'm super happy about it, by the way. I really appreciate it. Now, uh, somatotropin releasing in, release inhibiting hormone. That's a, another hormone. I told you in the start that we'll talk about two hormones. One that will in, uh, enhance the growth hormone release. The other one is the one that will inhibit the growth hormone release, right? So somatotropin release inhibiting hormone is the one. Um, okay, so SST has two forms, a 14 amino acid peptide and a 28 amino acid peptide that are produced by differential proteolysis from the <clears throat> same precursor. These peptides are produced in the hypothalamus and other areas of the brain and by pancreatic D cells beta cells, I guess, as well as by other cells in the gastrointestinal tract. SSD binds to specific somatostatin receptors in the plasma membrane of target tissues, right? Uh, okay, so at least five different isoforms of these receptors are expressed with marked differences in their tissue distribution. It was just an introduction of this, 
now comes up the main part. So somatostatin actually inhibits the release of growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland and the release of glucagon and insulin from the pancreas, right? So somatostatin also inhibits secretion of a number of gut peptides, all right? So you see, somatostatin is inhibiting the release. What it's inhibiting? Growth hormones release, TSH release. Uh, then it's, uh, you know, also inhibiting the release of glucagon, insulin from the pancreas, it's inhibiting the secretion of number of good peptides. So overall, you see, it is actually inhibiting the growth, right? Because you see, when the hormones will not be released, so as a result, proteins will not be made more, right? And when proteins are not made more, so overall, the result, the overall the result would be to, uh, you know, the if, if height and growth will be diminished. So there is a drug called octreo, uh, octreotide. So it's a peptide, octopeptide, uh, somatostatin uh, analog available for use. And it is administered by subcutaneous intramuscular or IV injections. So this is used to treat acromegaly. Now, what is acromegaly? This condition where you grow excessively abnormally tall, right? Okay. So, uh, okay. So it treats acromegaly, severe diarrhea associated with hypersecretory states, uh, such as so many tumors I've listed here, okay, that uh, uh, VIP secreting tumors. Um, you see, everything is ending by, with OMA. So gastrinoma, gluc uh, glucagonoma, then varicel and upper GI bleeding, TSH secreting and uh, adenomas. So whenever something ends with OMAs, it means it's a tumor. Uh, then we have lenreotide. So it's a long-acting somatostatin analog approved for the treatment of acromegaly. So maybe we can give this guy this drug, lenreotide, in order to get him treated. Uh, then is adverse effects of uh, adverse effects of uh, wait a minute adverse effects of octreotide include nausea. Uh, in the paper, by the way, you are not supposed to write nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting in the adverse effects. That will be not included. Okay. So it causes cramps, increased gall uh, gallstone formation. Both hypo and hyperglycemia have been reported with its use right so these are the uh, side effects adverse effects not side effects these are the adverse effects which i want you to memorize okay not dysnausea all right uh, even though it's also a thing but it goes with everything so i think we should focus on the main stuff all right so gonadotropin releasing hormone uh Last, uh, in the previous lecture, I remember that we uh, talked about gonadotropin, you know, releasing hormone and it's associated with the reproductive part of the reproduction, uh, reproductory system of the body. So you see, endogenous, uh, GNRH. Endogenous means that it is present within the cell, right? It's, it's made naturally. So uh, this uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone, okay, it's a 10 amino acid peptide secreted from pre optic area of hypothalamus. Now, what is pre optic area? You see here, this is the pre optic area, right? Okay, so it binds to specific receptors on pituitary gonadotrophs, short term or uh, pulsate. Wait a minute. All right, so short-term or pulsatile administration of GnRH agonists every one to four hours increases the synthesis and release of both luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. Uh, at this point, I do assume that you know what is LH, LH role and FSS role. Uh, this is related to the menstrual cycle, and if you go into the detail into it by Reading it, you'll get to know that 
luteinizing hormone is actually the one that kicks off the uh, you know ovule from the um, from the egg so you know the entire thing all right from the ovary so it is released the egg is released right fsh is follicle stimulating hormone so it is helping the uh, you know follicle to get developed anyway so chronic administration two to four uh, uh, two to four weeks of daily administration of GnRH inhibits the release of both LH and FSH by causing a reduction in the number of GnRH receptor. Uh, if you know about uh, if you know about uh, how receptors work, wait a minute, I have a message from you guys. Oh, okay. Right, I'm, I'm going to tell you about it. So I, I was about to tell you that uh, if you know about, <clears throat> if you know about uh, receptors, how they work, okay? How they are positively affected, how they are negatively affected, okay? So you will get to know about their mechanism, right? Okay, so I have this question, what is chronic administration? So you see, Chronic administration is when you're administering something for a long time, right? Okay. So you see, which is, wait a minute, I have a message again from you guys. Bitter, I am adding students. Whenever I'm pausing while delivering students, I'm adding students. Everybody is added. Zed and Bhati. Okay. All right. Okay. So coming up back. All right, uh, so you see chronic administration, even the bracket is written that two to four hour, a week of daily administration. So, you know, it's a long-term thing. Yeah, good, Seher, good. So it's a long-term thing, okay? Uh, wait a minute, okay. So uh, of GHRH inhibits the release of this and this. We already talked about it. I have put up this flow chart for you because um, I think it's easier for us to remember when we have things jotted down in flow chart. Anyway, so you see, uh, hypothalamus has GnRH, and then it will have positive impact on both. You see, LH and FSH. So LH will go to the lytic cell, and then as a result, testosterone is being produced, and then it will produce negative. You know, it will inhibit hypothalamus to produce more of the hormone, right? Same happens with in the female body that when FSH is produced, so as a result of hormone, inhibin is released, okay? Which inhibits more release of FSH, right? Okay. Then we have uh, GnRH analogs, okay? So they have two main uses. So one is chemical castration, Castration is removal of the testis. Recording chronic administration is useful in the treatment of hormone-dependent cancers and hyperplasia such as prostate cancer, breast cancer, endometriosis, and fibroids. So this end here, if you see this cyst is written, so this is about inflammation, uh, you know, developing more of the layers on the uterus. Anyways, so treatment of infertility requires Pulsatile administration of uh, administration to stimulate FSH and LH. Adverse effects include a transient worsening of symptoms, hot flashes, and induction of ovarian cyst in the first month of long-term use. Right? Okay. Then we have GnRH analogs. Analogs um, are the ones that mimic. Okay. Uh, the drugs, uh, the chemicals, the hormones activity. Uh, so first of all, we have guna, uh, gunadorilin, hydrochloride or acetate. So this is a decapeptide identical in sequence to endogenous uh, GnRH. Like I said, it has to be similar. So endogenous means the one which is which the cell is already releasing. Then we have this hydrochloride. It means you see, you have two formulations. One is in acetate, acetate and other one is, is with the hydrochloride. So whenever you have formulation in hydrochloride, so it can be used in the diagnosis of hypogonadism. Acetate is used for the treatment of infertility. You see, 
both of the uses are being discussed. Then we have uh, nepharilin acetate. So it is a synthetic decapeptide of GnRH with one modified amino acid. It is about 200 times more potent than GnRH and is administered as a nasal spray. Uh, it is used for management of endometriosis and, or, and central ferocious uh, puberty. So this is a kind of a puberty that hits earlier, uh, you know, a bit early than usual in uh, girls and boys, right? Okay, so this is a slide I have inserted, which is actually summarizing that where exactly it is used and everything. Um, because you see, in the exam, when you will be asked, so literally, you will use such tables to memorize um, the stuff more in detail. Okay, all right. So then you have uh, tiptorelin. Uh, so it's a decapeptide and it is more uh, potent than uh, GnRH. And then we have uh, gosterolin. So it, it's acetate contains two amino acid substitutions that increase its half-life as compared to that with endogenous GnRH. This peptide is injected either subcutaneously as a long-acting implant or by IV infusion, the half-life of the peptide is approximately 10 to 20 minutes following IV administration, okay? The peak response is achieved 15 minutes after IV administration and 30 to 60 minutes after subcutaneous injection. So therapeutic effectiveness of this implant is 28 days. Then we have a uh, leuprolide acetide. So this is a synthetic 9 amino acid GnRH analog with increased potency. It is administered parentally, parentally and a long-acting control release preparation is available. Um, this, is, you, uh, this may be used to treat prostate cancer, prostatic hypertrophy, breast cancer, endometriosis, and fibroids. Then we have hysterolin, and it's a non-peptide GnRH analog. Implant delivers a uh, drug continuously for one year. All right, then we have GnRH antagonist, right? The ones that are inhibiting, okay? It's released. So in that we have citro uh, relics, then we have geni relics, and then we have dega relics. So it's a class of GnRH analog that acts as pure antagonist. They do not cause a surge of testosterone or estradiol on the initiation of therapy. All are decapeptides and administered subcutaneously or intramuscularly. An advantage of the antagonist over the agonist is reduction in the required fertility therapy cycle from several weeks to only several days. Secondarily, the effects of GnRH antagonist start and reverse rapidly, allowing pituitary function to return to baseline within one to four days after drug discontinuation. These drugs are used as part of an assisted reproductive technology for, uh, procedure for endometriosis and prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, then we have this drug, wait a minute. Uh, okay, Dega relics. So it is approved for advanced prostate cancers. Everybody, thank you so much for attending this lecture today. Uh, inshallah.